Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2007 Subaru Forester. What we're doing on the Forester is we are replacing the alternator. This guy here is our replacement. Pay no attention to the squeak. The squeak is just something we're going to have to live with because the brand new one is $220 plus dollars. And well, Jimmy doesn't have that kind of money to spend on his wife right now. Anyhow, of course, I'll be showing you what the regular symptoms are and what you usually see on the dashboard because this one is broken down properly. I'll show you how to test it as well as how to replace it and give you the torque specs. Very quick overview of tools that you're going to need. Possibly a charger. I would definitely recommend a trickle charger or a charger to boost up your battery. You can plug it in the day before or you get a nice uh, heavy duty charger and you can plug it in for about 10-15 minutes and that should do your battery good. A jump pack will also work. Of course, this guy here well it's a good jump pack but the connections were rather shite and maybe i'll do a review video on that thing eventually as for the alternator tools a basic socket set that's all you need a torque wrench is something that i would recommend however it is not absolutely crucial to you doing the job a pry bar so you can get that stubborn ass thing out of there a hammer which is not in view but i have in my tool bag just in case we can't get the alternator to slide over the bracket nicely anti-c is always a good idea whenever doing this for the same bolt that may also require you to have some source of heat which i will be showing you in the video a small flat screwdriver and a pick to help with the wonderful alternator wire or the connector that goes to your alternator a offset wrench that has a 12 millimeter box end to it you also need just a 12 millimeter possibly a 13 if it's an aftermarket alternator like I currently have and a 10 mil with a couple of extensions to take care of this job. It is extremely easy, not hard to be honest. I'd probably be done already if I wasn't recording. However, this is for your viewing pleasure and my editing fun so that I don't have a gargantuan sized video to edit. Of course, very important, make sure you pray to God that your alternator does not give out on you when it is in the dead of winter. Currently it is minus four Four, which isn't too bad for us up here in Canada usually it's it gets a little bit colder for January we're a little bit over over what it usually is however I'll take it nonetheless pray to God it doesn't happen to you in winter that way you don't freeze your ass off and be redundant and whatnot because your brains are completely frozen anyhow before we get started with today's video very important do me a big favor hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos okay Let's get this started. Now, you will need a very basic multimeter just to tell you the voltage. That's all you really need. You can see here we are at 12. So I'm going to throw my trickle charger on this and get this thing up to 12.65. Nonetheless, now we'll start it up. We'll show you that the battery is dead. You can see our battery is in a decent state because it is slowly going back up on its own. Thank you, battery. Of course, our alternator has let it down. Anyhow, let's uh, let's go start this thing up and I'll show you that wonderful battery light. But generally, when your alternator fails, you will see there the battery light. That's your first indicator. Also, commonly, the ABS light will come on. The brake light is just on because we have our stupid uh, handbrake up. But yeah, that doesn't matter. So yeah. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and change out that alternator before I drain my battery anymore. Okay, so for the battery, I've hooked my charger up. We're going to let that guy charge our battery up. We went down just in that short little period to 11.3 volts, which shows you how critical it is that you pull over because it doesn't take much to destroy, the, well, to take away the juice in your battery and possibly destroy it if you get it too drained. So. Make sure you're aware of that. If you do get those lights, get off to the side of the road. Make sure you get yourself a tow truck or you can do what I'm doing and just change the goddamn thing. Luckily, we were able to nurse this thing home and my wife didn't shut off. So thank you God for that. Next most important thing, if you're not familiar with this stuff, it is recommended highly that you disconnect your battery whenever working on any sort of electrical system because you don't want to cause yourself any headaches. So simply get a 10 mil, take off your negative cable, and uh, then you can reattach it when the job is all done. Now, first things first, what we gotta do is get these 10 mils here out of the way. What you're gonna do is just crack this one loose. Actually, we can on this model, but on the older ones, uh, this stupid little thing is not there, so you can just flip that guy off to the side. Nonetheless, get that crap out of the way. Of course, you can use power tools. They do make your life considerably easier. However, no real need for them. You can do this by hand just fine. 
This alternator is actually something I was going to make a video on because prior to it failing, it wasn't working properly as well. What was happening was, so you, essentially in an alternator, you have three phases and it charges, making it appear as though uh, you have one single phase coming in um, because it's constantly bumping the amount of uh, voltage or charge. Um, so it looks like it's straight. Um, however, this guy here lost a phase. So if you look carefully whenever idling, you could see that it was not, it wasn't right because it looked like it would dip in power. And of course, if you rev it up, the faster it goes, the quicker uh, the jump to the next uh, phase is. And then you don't uh, see that dip in power. Our next step, get that wonderful offset wrench. Now, you can, depending on the model, some of these brackets are a bit different. That's why I find this guy works the best. It also, it's easier to get behind this guy and the shield onto that bolt for the tensioner. So that's usually why I recommend getting it. However, you can do this without the offset wrench. All you gotta do basically is get yourself a uh, one inch extension. Uh, because depending of course on the model it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get the ratchet combination and a 3 inch extension in there with the 12 mil. Pull that guy out of there, now get yourself a 12 mil. Now I don't know what it is but I tend to find myself changing alternators in the friggin cold which sucks. Now do yourself a favor, crank that guy, see if he'll turn, thank you lord. That is wonderful news for me. Now loosen up the tensioner here. Wonderful. All right, this is gonna be one easy job for me. Now this connector here can be a pain in the ass. You gotta take your time with it and just really make sure you get the, the clip portion to pop. Now how I do that is just push down into the alternator and then once you feel it kind of unhinge, you can pull up, wiggle it a bit. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, that guy, I don't know if this one's going to be enough for it, but let's let's hope. Oh, what is your problem, guy? Yeah, okay, well, you know what? We might have to mess with that later. For now, let's get the cable off. And yeah, see, so this is an aftermarket, and you can see this here is not a 12 mil. So we're going to need a 13 mil to get that stupid thing off. Never a fan of that. I always like going with the original socket or original nut just because it, it can get irritating. Um, I don't know. That's just a personal thing for me. It really is up to you. Does it really make a difference? No, not at all. Get yourself your little 90 degree pick. Just let that guy loose. Now be extra gentle if you are doing this in the cold because everything likes to break really easily. That's plastic in the cold, which sucks. Make sure this guy here is nice and protected make sure it's not going to touch anything just in case let's get rid of the snow because it's melting on my legs and making my my nether regions nice and frozen anyhow let's try this uh, connectorino here once more now you don't want to be overly aggressive with this guy here never pull on the wires because they they will come out uh so what we're going to do is just pull the alternator out all together and then we'll mess with that clip or that uh, connector I'd say that guy needs some oil. Before you let that guy out all the way, just turn this guy right down so that way there's no tension. If you have tension on it and it slips out of there, it can damage the uh, threading on the alternator, which, I mean, it just sucks, so don't do it. Bad practice. Yeah, you know what? Lucky for me, I bought a goddamn gun, so I'm going to use it. Like I say, you don't need one, but fuck that shit. See, this guy's nice and rotted, so we're going to help ourselves. This is why you need either WD or some antices. Antices makes everything better, friends. Yeah. Okay, 
well, and we're not going to push it anymore because I don't have a tap and I don't want to screw it up. So let's leave that off to the side. We'll take the uh, wonderful bolt out and then we'll proceed with taking out the rest of the bolts that hold this contraption in. Well, there's only one more, Jimmy. There we go. That guy's nice and lubricated. Well, got some type of crap on it. Now Subaru has this wonderful bracket, which I will show you once we get it off, but that guy likes to fall into the engine bay. And depending on which model of EJ you have can be a real nightmare to retrieve. So always keep your middle finger on it or well, whatever portion of your hand on it so that you don't lose it. Now, there we go. That's the bracket there. Don't lose that guy. Pull your belt off. And then you're going to slide this guy out. It's nice and loose, thankfully. Pull that long 12 mil out. That guy there. And then just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. Now, see here, we have easy access to our connector. So now we can pry on either side of the connector there to get that guy loose without breaking it. Now, take your time because this guy is cold and it will break okay just back and forth let's see if we can double this on this side here there we go yes baby sometimes you got a tag team and they like that sort of thing you know not much for tag teaming but uh, you got to win the game you got to do what you got to do right all right give her some more oh you fucker man just what's your problem now guy you're almost out and now oh you fucking bitch yeah, I don't know why, but uh, she's being uh, stubborn, eh? Or stubborn, eh? That's, uh, that's Jimmy English for stubborn. Looks like the little rubber piece there has expanded somehow. I don't know what the deal is with that, but definitely sucks for me. Can't get her to twist very well here. Oh, yeah, you fucker. Wow. That is seriously toy. It's usually a good thing, but uh, not in this case. Holy shit, man. I don't know if this aftermarket connector on this alternator, because this is a rebuilt one, is a problem or what the deal is, but this is never usually that tight. Yeah, I don't know why that's so tight, but I don't see any signs of crap. Just shitty alternator. Yeah, you can launch this into the stratosphere now, whatever makes you happy. This thing's garbage. Uh, well, if you bought it from a rebuilder, take it back because they'll give you a quirk. Now, if you're in an unfortunate situation like moi and you don't have, you know, much dollarinos, noises like that aren't overly concerning. They can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but as long as you verify that it is a good alternator and it charges, this one's been just sitting on the shelf for a while, so chances are it's going to go away with the noises that it has. If it doesn't, well, thank you, neighbor. Um, if it doesn't, well, I'll deal with it at that point, but as for now, I'm chucking this thing in here because that's all my pocket will allow, and that's all I got. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, throw her in. Now, in order to make sure you're not going to have a headache before you go ahead and chuck this thing into the car, verify that this thing will slide into the bracket area here if it's not going to. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You don't understand how nice that is. Uh, believe me, you do a few of these ones on the side of the road, you'll know. If it isn't, see, you can see there is a, there's a dowel what you need to do is get a socket that will slide uh, just around the air of the alternator and you're gonna make sure that it is not hindering this being pushed out what you're gonna do is just tap this side either with the 12 mil or whatnot very gently uh, the heat gun will work with that if you do have one just heat it up very lightly and it, you, you'll be able to push this thing back slightly um, if for whatever reason you can't and you have nothing else you can just file it off a little bit uh, not the end of the world of course try to do it as straight as possible once you get that out of the way Go ahead and slide your alternator in. Now, very, very important, put some anti-seize on these bolts. It does two things. It makes sure that it's not going to give you a pain in the ass. And it also makes sure that the next time you have to touch this, uh, if you ever have to, you don't have any headaches because metal rust and yeah it sucks when it rusts go ahead grab your bolt you're gonna slide this guy in grab your bracket and just 
winder up. Don't tighten it up. Make sure you leave a gap there. Oh, this guy doesn't want to change direction. Come on, baby. Oh, don't fucking do that to me. I don't have any other ratchets. Okay, thank you, God. I don't want to do that shit with a wrench, buddy. Great, my mom's doing something. I can hear noises coming from my garage. Mom, recording, man. Yeah, it's your son outside in the driveway, freezing. I'm recording. You're making noise. I'm trying to record. I'm trying to record. Yeah, that's okay, ma. And it's cold. I don't know what you're doing out. My mother's awesome. You know, she tells us all the time, make sure you uh, dress warm in the winter time. And she's out with a pair of, uh, they're like those warm type slip-ons and just her tights and a sweater in the garage, which is almost as cold as outside. So yeah, thanks for taking your own advice, Ma. Good job. Anyhow, uh, your next step here is to put your belt back on. Slide that guy into place. Oh, don't be a dick. Oh, oh, that's why it's a little bit off on the crank of my shaft. And the power steering belt on the power steering pulley. God, I'm just, you know, this is what happens when you're frozen, dude. I've been out here now for about, I don't know, about 45 plus minutes and my brain is frozen as well as my, you know, another B word. All right, you're gonna lift this guy into position. Make sure you thread this in by hand. No threading this in with any sort of thing until you catch it. You wanna make sure that you're catching the bolt properly because if you don't and you cross thread it especially on the Subaru alternator they strip quite easily and then you're gonna have to do the nut and bolt jankiness which sucks it's not fun so go ahead don't snug it up just a bit you want to make sure there's very little play you want to make sure it can I tighten it up too much on camera like a retard after saying not to you want to make sure that you can get this to move freely because if it can't move freely, well, no one's going to be happy. Now, get your 12 mil, spin this. Give it a nice push. You want about quarter, around 5 16 to 3 8 of an inch of deflection is fine. What I'm going to do before I put my nice, wonderful bracket on and cinch everything down is verify that the alternator works. So let's go ahead now. Let's see if this one's a 12. It's not, it's a 13. So what the hell happened to my original? Whatever, anyhow. In this case, we're gonna be using the one with the washer because it's nicer. So let's put this guy back on. Get our wonderful bolt here. Thread it down. Oh man, she's getting colder and colder as the minutes go by. Uh, I don't remember what the torque is for this guy here probably say no more than 10 foot pounds but yeah i don't usually torque this I just do it hand tight don't be a gorilla and break the goddamn thing it's you don't have to be superman to tighten that guy up okay slide that guy back in there now if this guy goes on hard a little bit of wd-40 if you have it if you have silicone spray that's definitely the best thing to do I'll just push it on all right perfect now i've got a trickle charger so i'm going to clear up some of my tools you know what i'm going to give it a little bit of time and i'm going to come back out and try and start this thing but as of now i am frozen so i'm going inside for a bit okay so uh it's been about i don't know 20 minutes maybe a little bit more uh currently we're at just under 13 volts we're at 12.99 i don't think that's going to be enough juice but uh, fingers crossed uh let's go ahead try and fire this thing up and see what happens if not we'll just throw the booster pack on it and uh let the alternator do its uh do its good work all right let's fire <laughs> Well, I wasn't expecting that. A bit slow, but she fired up. You can hear that wonderful uh, squeaky squeaky noise. Uh, but best of all, we got a nice 14 plus volts, baby. That means we are good to go. Anyhow, process is now. We're gonna let this thing run. Let it heat up a bit. That way when I touch it, my hands aren't frozen like ice blocks. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, so been roughly about, I don't know, 
10, not even 10 minutes, about five minutes, I'd say. Um, and yeah, what I've done, what you want to do at home as well, is if you have a used alternator, uh, even if you have a brand new one, load the thing up. What that means is turn everything on in the car. Turn your blower motor on, your headlights, your lighting system all together, fog lights, whatever. Um, heated seats if you have them. Uh, just load the thing up. What you want to do is look and see what the voltage is at idle. You can see there we got 4.14.29. would be very bad. 14.3 is perfect. It means we have a nice strong alternator. Of course the battery is a bit weak because we didn't have a full charge. So our alternator is going to be working through that. Usually when it works that out you're going to see a voltage at the alternator or at the battery of around 14. You should have a voltage that is no lower than 13.5 or 14.5. Usually if it is around there it's it's going to indicate a problem one way or the other long term or in the short term okay we're good to go i'm going to shut this thing down now and then we're going to go ahead and put all those wonderful brackets back go ahead grab this wonderful bracket there are two washers on the front of this 12 mil bolt make sure you have the small one towards the head of the bolt and then the big one towards the alternator what you're going to do is just slide it into place grab this wonderful thing throw some anti-seize on it and then just thread this guy in always throw anti-seize on these bolts because like everything else they like to be a pain in the ass 12 mil. Oh yeah, damn it. I like torquing these guys before I put this fucking thing into place. Well, too fucking late for that. There's the other Subaru in my life. We're going to be doing a video on that soon enough. There's lots of Subarus in my life. Hi, Dad. How are you, son? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just recording, I'm finishing up this alternator. Oh, okay. All right, either bolt, uh, 12 mil for the wonderful alternator requires 18 foot pounds or 25 newton meters of torque. Now, I'm a little bit different depending on whether your alternator is rebuilt or an original OE. I give them either the 18 foot pounds or I give it 15 for this guy here, the bolt down that holds it to the tensioner bolt or tensioner bracket. The reason being is because usually that hole gets tapped and there's less material and they will strip out at 18. So what I'm going to do, because this one was a previously rebuilt one, is give this one 15 and that guy there 20. All right. All right. So 20 foot pounds over on that bolt there or 27 newton meters. Make sure your torque wrench is on. Really helps. Then 15 for that guy there. 15 or 20 newton meters. 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters for this guy if it is rebuilt. There we go. All right, we are almost done. Don't forget that little guy there. Throw it back on. Torque specs for these, I think, are like seven foot pounds or something like that. Seven foot pounds or 10 newton meters. I'm not sure. I never really torqued them, to be honest. Just hand tight. Don't ogre the thing on and break anything. And you'll be good to go, friends. Oh, yeah, it's nice and cold out here, guys. We're at a nice zero degrees currently. Which, you know, ain't too bad, but. I mean, to be honest, it's pretty good for this time of year. <laughs> you know, buddy. All right, this is wonderful. My wife will be happy. She won't complain about my car being dirty because she won't have to sit in it. Last bolt here. Wonderfully. Okay. Let's see what we're at on the batteria. We are currently at 12.68, and that's dropped down after about 10 minutes. So let's fire it up and see if we're all good. All right, she fired up. We're also back at 14.2. Things are looking good for the Super Maru, baby. And if you're concerned about my starter, it is shitty. Maybe I'll be doing a video on that and how to rebuild it or replace it, one or the other. Hopefully, I don't find out the hard way. All right. Well, that's all she wrote for this one. All you got to do is make sure that nice little battery light stays off and doesn't come back to haunt your life, and you are good to go. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video, found it entertaining as well as helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget 
forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. That guy there is the one we have to get out. It is currently dead. I'll show you exactly what the normal symptoms are and what you can look for. Ah, oh, fuck, it's cold. Fuck. Got a brisk wind. It's four fucking... Or minus four today, which is nice. You don't give a fuck about that. Anyhow, nothing expensive like this. Yeah, seven hundred dollars later, it still hurts. Uh, or seven plus years later, I think. Oh wait, how many fucking years has it been? It's been longer than that. I think about. That. Well, this doesn't fucking matter. Anyhow, stupid Jimmy. Of course, my charger is. Oh, it's minus one. Okay. Anyhow, <clears throat> it said minus four at six o'clock this morning, but uh, it is currently eleven o'clock. So thank you for climate change. I guess. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> All right, shut up, car. Yes, shut the fuck up, man. All right, now let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Of course that fucking charger's a pile of shit. Quarter to half inch of deflection on the belt. Um, closer towards quarter, so around, around 5 sixteenths to um, uh, three quarter, three, oh, for fuck's sakes, Jimmy. We'll give it. We'll give it a nice attempt here. I shouldn't be trying to put the pen in while I'm fucking. Anyhow. Oh fuck! It would help if I had the keys. Turn your blower motor. Blower. Blah, 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 blah. Usually it gets down to about four point fourteen. Four, why? Why am I saying four? Uh, you should have a voltage that is no lower than fourteen. Or fuck's sakes, Jimmy! This is not that hard. The Amazon guy thinks he's on a fucking racetrack. <laughs> Holy fuck, did you hear that? That crunching sound was the guy throwing it into fucking bark. I gotta see this. Oh yeah, 100% company guy. He just threw a fucking box. He launched that shit onto the fucking bark, buddy. This guy does not give a shit. Uh, well, what to do? Yeah, that guy is something else, buddy. He just... <laughs> <laughs> fucking launched it into park without uh, waiting for the vehicle to come to a stop that is a very bad practice anyhow not my vehicle not yours all right go ahead grab your torque wrench the bolts uh either oh, fuck what did i say someone's trying to locate their car or steal it one or the other oh fuck off dude come on is this thing fucking off because that of course it's off, motherfucker. I'm wondering why the fuck that was so fucking tight. Yeah, I was talking for too long. The fuck is my six inch extension? Make sure your battery light doesn't come back on. If it does, well, run for the hills. Make sure you have some sort of towing or assistance package and you'll be good to go. Till the next time, whenever you have to do some maintenance on the wonderful car. Uh, yeah, I'm married to this one, so yeah, I'll be seeing it for a while. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, this ending is taking too fucking long. <laughs>